There's a lot of optimism from Manchester United fans ahead of this season. And part of that is because they're back in the ground as well. And that contributes to that whole kind of old school feeling for Manchester United. Of course, yeah. And I think with the signings Oli's made as well. Um, I think Oli's made his mind out. He wants Manchester United to be very attacking this season. Get back to the old Manchester United. You know, um, got old fashioned wingers, so to speak. Uh, creativity in midfield. And when you've got Bruno in the form he's been in, you know, carrying on to this season, you're going to get goals. And that's what they produced last weekend. Yeah. And they, they do go out on the front foot under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. In fact, he's been, there have been more games, many, miles more games, in which they've scored five or more goals under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer than under David Moyes, Louis van Gaal or Jose Mourinho. It, it's just, it seems to be a strike first mentali- mentality. If you wind the clock back to, December 2018, their very first game on the interim Ole Gunnar Solskjaer against Cardiff was a 5-1. And what was interesting there was Wayne Rooney gave a little comment about the difference about playing under mm. Solskjaer, what that would be like compla- compared to playing under Mourinho. And he said, under Mourinho, you only really attack with two or three players where Solskjaer very clearly wants four or five. Yeah. And you saw some of these goals against Leeds United, Pogba's interlinking yeah. with Bruno, who's interlinking with Mason Greenwood, Scott McTominay's not too far behind. They get at you with numbers and at mm. speed. Yeah, it is. And, and to, for a striker to play in that sort of setup, I've put someone else's teeth in today. For a striker to play in that sort of setup, it, it's just, it, it's, all, it's all there for you. It's all been created for you. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's quite, it was quite frightening to, to see. And even with, even with Lindelof's pass, it seems like everybody, everybody who's playing, and it re, and like I say, it reminds me of back in the day, is that everybody who gets on the ball for, for the Man United side is looking to do some form of damage to you. And when you've got the runners, like, like the, the, the Greenwood goal was, was perfect, um, where, you know, you give somebody like Pogba that much time and space and he'll hit a pass that you don't see very frequently. Maybe Kevin De Bruyne might be able to do that as well. But he done it with so, it was so lax and so calm and so beautiful. Onto a fully, full pace, Mason Greenwood was straight catching him. And it, it, was, it was beautiful to watch. So what you see with United, where the game is, is stretched and it's end to end, Man United in that format, unstoppable because they've got so many players in the moment. Bruno, you know, Pogba, Greenwood, you know, Sancho, and he started yet. No, no Rashford. You've got so many players in, in the moment that will hurt you if you're trying to attack and they get the moments and then they'll punish you. Mm-hmm. Let's talk Paul Pogba. Four assists in that victory for, for him. And after a, a slightly unsettled summer for him, he's come in, he's started the season all guns blazing. Is this a sign of what we can expect from him this season consistently? I, I, I think with Paul, yeah. Um, I think he's carried his form on from the Euros. I thought in the Euros he was absolutely fantastic. But we, we all know his passing ability. We, know, we all know he's very creative and can score goals as well. But I think on Saturday he proved to everyone just how good a player is. And people are starting to disrespect him a little bit too much. You know, saying, ah, oh, four assists, yeah, he's got four assists, but what else? Mm. He has brought quality and he'll continue to do that this season, yeah? We're not sure if he's going to sign a new contract at Manchester United, but you have to enjoy him if he's not going to be at Manchester United come next season. But the thing is, is, um, is that people talk about the contract and even when he had the problems with Riola and, and Oli, when he's, he, was, he was shouting off his mouth a bit, the, 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 the agent, Pogba still played good football. Mm. And you're looking at Pogba now, even with all, all players now, I remember Arsene Wenger said it a few years ago, all players will be looking to probably run their contracts down. It's not something that's a bad thing. It's just that players know that that's an opportunity. Pogba's not, it's not affected the way Pogba's playing. He's still bringing everything. And what he's, what he's proven to Man United now is, is that whether he wants to move or not, I don't think for me at the moment, especially with Varane coming the other way, if somewhere like Real Madrid or Barcelona is better than where he is right now. And mm. so what he's doing, he's playing a brand of football that he probably, hopefully for Man United fans, will realise, well, yeah, I, w- I want to be here. But at the same time, people have c- got to stop talking about, oh, he's only got a year left. Because they're going to constantly talk about yeah, yeah, contract, where if he plays well, if he doesn't play well. <clears throat> Whereas Pogba just gets on and does that. Yeah. That's a brilliant start to the season for him. That changing landscape in football and that shift in power yeah. is something we're going to come on to in, mm-hmm. in a bit more detail later on. But on Paul Pogba and the way he's, he's started this season with that opening game, and as Andrew said, you know, picking up from the form that he had in, in the Euros, <coughs> nobody's, nobody's saying that he's not capable <coughs> of those performances. What they're saying is, will we see them not every week, but most weeks? Yes, and that always remains the, the difficult thing about the sort of on-his-day performance of Paul Pogba still doesn't quite guarantee you a win. If you think about 
for me, Paul Pogba was the best player at the Euros up until that game against Switzerland yeah. goes through extra time. Mm. And then it all sorts of implodes a little bit. Yeah. Pogba played well against Leeds because Leeds, with that man-marking system, gave him space. You know, Bruno Fernandes was being marked by Robin Koch and Bruno Fernandes sort of dropped deep and gave extra space for Paul Pogba. And if you give Pogba enough space on the ball, he's going to yeah. put that ball wherever he wants to. And it's fantastic. And I think that goal for Mason Green was, was exemplary in terms of give him a bit of space and he can not only move the defender, but he can also move the player mm -hmm. and create the vision. That's going to be fine against a team like Leeds United. That's going to be good against teams that want to come on to Manchester United. I think their home record will improve this season because teams will want to try and basically be repelled by whatever attacking call that United throw on. It's when United play against teams that want to drop deep, that want to defend deep and don't want to come out, that's where the difficulty comes for Paul Bob. We know Pogba, like a lot of players that are over six foot, doesn't really like it when two players come to press him. So he hasn't had great games at Southampton, which will be interesting because Southampton are a high-pressing team. If Ralph Hassan was watching Pogba, he's going to go send two lads up on him and see what happens next. Yeah, see well, what happens. Yeah, but then, you, then, then surely um, the signing of someone like Sancho, because mm -hmm. of us, jump the gun here. No, Okay. Go. Um, the signing of someone like Sancho, who, the same for me, like, as Grealish, so he, can, he gives you a different problem when he mm. gets on the ball. If team's going to stay deep, and so what happens is he has got no, he'll take players out of the game with skills. I think that this is one of the biggest like factors for me for United this season. We know their left side is brilliant. What Luke Shaw does, you know, when Rashford's playing, everything comes from that side for some reason. And the right hand side is the percentages. I would love to see what the percentages of the goals created from this side is. I just, I'm sure it'd be a lot, lot further behind than the left. Jaden Sancho will bring that right up. And it'll also bring that problem what Carl has, um, has, has highlighted, which is a problem for United, creating that when people are doing that low block. And I think that he's somebody that now, he'll take players out of the game with skills going into boxes, more free kicks, more opportunities to get the ball in the box for people like Harry Maguire and maybe Varane. So I feel that they've slowly just, they're slowly just sorting out all their, all their problems. more options. Yeah, mm. but maybe that, that yeah. holding midfielder, Carl, at some stage, I'm sure they're going to get that person. But at the moment, you're seeing everything in that performance. And you're right to say it, Kels. It's only one, it's only one, it's only one game. But they've started with a kind of a, a, an attitude that makes me think, right, they're, they're, they're here to play. Yeah, I, I think Manchester United are better as well when they don't play with two holders. Mm. I mean, I think when you're at home, you can't play two holders. Yeah. Not Old Trafford. Yeah. You know, with the quality that they have, you don't need two holders, man. Yeah, man. You're going to dominate the game. You know, and actually when you come against the bigger teams, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different, but... Old Trafford, you've got to go for it. It's as simple as that. That's the way we've been brought up. Yeah, I, I remember, you, I think it was the first time you, you came on this show and you talked about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and what his blueprint might mm -hmm. be. And you were looking back at that classic team that, that Solskjaer played in. Are they close, bringing Sancho in? Are they now closer to kind of creating that setup? I think they're as close as they've ever been. Uh, after the victory against Leeds, I did ask Solskjaer sort of how he develops Mason Greenwood. I said, when you've got a player like Greenwood who... I'm assuming you want to one day make the striker. When do you add an extra bit to his game? And then Solskjaer looked at me and went, who told you I want to make him a striker? <laughs> and I got very embarrassed. And he, goes, <laughs> and he said, no. So you said Greenwood plays on the left. You can play on the right. You look at his goal that came on the left-hand side. He can play in all these positions. And then I went, well, do you want him to play in all these positions? And he said, yeah. yeah I want all. He goes, everyone apart from Cavani, Cavani's the only fixed striker. And then he mentioned Carlos Tevez, Wayne Rooney, mm. And yeah, but I, I don't think Mace. I don't think Mace actually wants to play as a centre forward. No, no. You know, uh, that's, that's a tough, that is a difficult, difficult role to be a number nine. That's, that's pressure. I know if you play off the left or right, it's, it's different. But being a number nine at Old Trafford, yeah. I thought what was interesting was he mentioned the 07-08 team, which when I was here before, I said I think he wants to do that. Mm. And he was the forwards coach in 07 a little mm. bit mm. towards the end of that season before he became the reserve team coach. And I think he's always had it in his mind: could he create? a front three that was a bit like Rooney, Ronaldo and Tevez. Mm. And they're getting closer. I think San Jaden Sancho is the sort of Ronaldo-esque right-sided player that can go into loads of positions. Greenwood is just sort of Tevez-esque where he's a bit more of a striker, but he can also play on both sides. Mm. And then we know Marcus Rashford grew up watching Wayne Rooney and he adores watching Wayne Rooney and has that sort of very selfless streak where you can move him into all those sorts of positions. Mm. So there is a version of a United front three where you have that front three and they're all constantly changing positions. And I think that's a nightmare to play against if you're an yeah. opposition team.
Yeah, really difficult to, to play against. Mm -hmm. But for Mason Greenwood, like you, as you said, not, if he doesn't want that that fixed number nine position, is he is he better suited to, to playing in that in that more flexible role? I, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think with, with Mason's talent, you know, he's, he's forced that he can play across the arm, um, the line, you know, centre forward, left or right. But listening to like some of the coaches, Fletch and people like that, who I speak to, I don't think he's fixed on playing as a number nine. You know. Like I said, number nine is, is tough. And as a, such a young State kid... State of mind. Exactly. As such yeah. a young kid, you know, to be Manchester United's number nine at that age, it's, it's hard work. Well, I think now Cravani, and if you listen to the noises Oli's making, you know, come next season, you know, then we're looked to buy, for instance, a Haaland or a Kane if he's still available. I think they're looking long-term, right? Mace won't be a number nine, but he'll play. But they want a number nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's not doing too badly in terms of, of goals scored, though, Mason Greenwood, mm. and compared to, to other teenagers in the Premier League. I mean, he's, he's up there, maybe not with the, the very best out-and-out -out strikers who are hitting sort of numbers of, of 30 or so. Mm. But given that he only has until the 1st of October and then he's no longer a teenager, yeah. he's, a, he's at 18 there behind, yeah. behind Nicholas and Elka. Um, I think that when you look at what Mason Greenwood's doing there, it, for the numbers are amazing because you look at, of course, Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler. And, and Michael Owen's career was so front-loaded, yes, wasn't it? Was it was very front-loaded. Yeah. Yeah. But what, what they haven't had to go, go through, what Mason Green has gone through, is being at Man United from a young age all the way to get through that academy into the first team and then start putting up numbers like he's putting up and then putting in performances like we saw um, against Leeds at the start of the season. And if, if that's something, to, uh, uh, a sign of things to come, then it's going to be frightening what he's going to end because he's, he's done a lot of hard work just getting where he is mm. and he's got there under a lot of pressure yeah. you know he's, he's, he's under a lot of pressure because it just comes with the territory of United and he seems to be dealing with it now sorting out all the stuff else all the other stuff that's going on with him and he just seems ready now and so I feel that not long he's going to be blasting fast all of those numbers I mean he's helped having that summer off as well 